A little blind dog here. Ow. Over here, buddy. Over here. <laughs> he's old and he's blind, but he gets out here and wanders around. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm waiting on the eyes for the crappie. They're not in yet, so I'm, I'm kind of stuck until they get here. So what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be building the um, all the components for the habitat base and, and working on the habitat base for it. I'm going to be using this. Let me show this real good here. This is a um, piece of walnut. It's a, a tight, it's tight grain walnut. It's heavy. This thing weighs as much as a concrete block, the same size. But uh, my my good friend David Okonski in New York made this for me. He also made a uh, one a little bit a little bit longer, but it's made out of uh, curly hickory, so it's a little bit lighter wood, but it's also heavy. But I don't know if you can see that or not, but he inset the top of it so that it'll hold all the gravel and the rocks. And I'm going to uh, also be cutting a limb out of this piece of scrap pine here. Uh, competition, it has to be carved. You can't, I can't just go out here and cut a limb down and shave it down and put it on here and call it good. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw it out and then carve it down to a, a, a limb. I'm also going to be making gravel for the habitat base and probably a few rocks. Uh, but I'm going to be using this Durham's water putty. And it's just a powder that you mix with water that you form to fill in cracks and seal windows and whatever. I'm sure well, there's a lot of uses for it, but I'm going to use it to make gravel with. And I'm going to be using these two rubber made containers that I bought specifically for this so I don't have to use my wife's good Tupperware. Uh, last time I did it, I just I was making small batches, so I did it in a gallon size Ziploc baggie. But I think this is going to work much better and I can shake it. But I'll show you that in a minute anyway. But anyway, I'm going to get started on this. I'm going to draw the. Uh, pattern of the limb out I want on this and then get in on the bandsaw and cut it out so let me get started on that I'm gonna turn the camera around here where you can see it and be right back all right this has got a few splits in it but I think it'll be fine once I get it cut out and um, and sealed I'm trying to decide I think the grain is running this way so I probably have a limb come up about that high and I may go right across the top of this knot for just a little jut out piece or a secondary limb coming off but the crappie will be mounted to the main limb so all right let me get my, my sharpie here somewhere and let's see here. So I'm probably just going to do something. I want it to angle just a little bit. I don't know. I may do two limbs jutting out. I think that's probably high enough. And I may do a limb, a little broken limb. Coming off that way. All right, so that'll be my limb that I'll cut out. And I'll play with the base with how much I want it to angle. Once I get get this cut out, then I can uh, then I can angle the base cut here to to match way it, the way I want it to lean on the on the on the base itself. All right, so I'm gonna get set up in and cut this out on a bandsaw and I'll uh, be back here in just a second. Okay, so I went ahead and cut out some uh, 
rough rock shapes in the scrap just so that I'll have them here but I may use some of them I may use some of them in the uh, on this base and I've got a lot cut already in in, in the house so but I just never hurts to cut some more but I'll leave these here and get back out to uh, okay so you can kind of see the limb shape here um this this i'll probably cut this one off shorter and i'm just going to round the whole thing off and just give it some texture like a limb so um and then it'll go on it'll mount on the base somewhere here and i may cut it down oh that's a pretty good angle there So, but anyway, I'll figure that out once I get it, once I get it cut down, and then. Um, so now I'm going to get started. I'm going to make some uh, some of this water putty here, and some gravel, and let me get set up, and I'll be back on that in just a second. Okay, so I've got a couple of containers here, and let me open this can. As you can see it's just a powder kind of a yellowish white powder hello wind so i'm gonna dump some in this container here And what I do is I just take some water and start sprinkling it in. And what that does, these little droplets get in that powder and form uh, little balls. I'm just gonna let that set for a second so it can kind of soak up. And then put the lid on it here. I probably should have done more water than that. Matter of fact, I think I will because shake it around there so and it'll form all kinds of different different sizes from sand granulars, depending on how much water you put in it, down to a uh, small pebble size. And I want all sizes, so. All right, let me stop there. And give it a shake, lay it on it. And just shake it up. So that they all get attached. water and I'll take a second container here and just dump this in here and what you have left is the gravel. And if you can see, there's bigger pieces and then tiny, almost grain, almost sand size. So I'm just gonna keep doing that process until I get a bucket full enough to fill this up and then uh, we'll go from there okay so I've, I've got all the gravel done I'm gonna do today and 
I was going to do enough to do both bases. I've got another base, but I'm going to stop here um, just so I can get started on carving this down today. And uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to show painting them today either. Uh, it's simple to do. What I do is I lay them out on a piece of newspaper and I divide them up into three or four equal piles. And then I just take a can of spray paint, regular old spray paint, and I'll use like a dark gray, a light gray, a dark brown, and maybe a lighter brown, maybe even a olive green or something. And then I'll spray each pile. I mean, they're, they're spread out and I'll spray each pile and then I let it dry for a few minutes and then I go in and I roll the piles around so it exposes the other side and then I spray it again. I may do that two or three times till it gets an even coat. You won't coat them all together, but some of this natural color will show through and that's fine because it just adds to, it, it just adds to the look of the gravel. And I may, as you can see, I made some rocks and I'll paint these by hand and some of the color I use on these, I may brush on before I glue the rocks down, I may brush it on the uh, the gravel. It's kind of messy and you have to do it and roll it around, but it'll, it'll get some of that local color on there and just make it all blend in a little better. So anyway, I'm gonna get uh, put this up and get started on carving this down to make it fit the base. So let me get set up and I'll be right back. All right, I'm ready to start kind of refining this down a little bit to make it look more like a limb. You can see it's uh, you got a little short limb here that kind of crooks over. This limb's kind of straight. I'm gonna have a like a broken off limb knot here, and I'll put all kinds of uh, texture in there and uh, to make it look like a limb. And once I get it painted and get some moss on it it'll uh it should look pretty realistic so uh, from my understanding in competition you can't just go out and take a limb off of a tree and stick it on uh, and expect it to gain points so um, i'm carving it out of this solid piece of pine here and uh, i think it'll be fine hopefully the grain will show up just a little bit where they can see that it's not a um, just a wild land. So let me get camera situated and I'll get started on this. Um, this is going to take some serious wood removal so I'm going to use this extra coarse cuts all bit here and uh, let's see how it works. It's going to be dusty. good thing about this is I don't have to sand it <laughs> I think leaving it rough and then I'll, I'll gouge some um, texture in it and I won't have to sand it basically all I'm gonna do is take off the grinding marks and then I'll uh, I'll figure out another bit to use, and I'll just I'll gouge some little some little textures in it. Yeah, I kind of like that. It's leaving a little bit of fuzz. 
and I think that's going to look natural once I paint it because once a once a stick's been underwater for for a long time, you know, it gets black and mossy and algae growing on it. That's going to make like a natural algae look. So this one's going to be fairly easy, I think. All right, I'm gonna switch it to a bit now and get down into the corners here and start putting some um, detail in it. I thought about breaking the ends of these limbs off and um, so it looks like it's broken underwater and then just kind of rough, you know, smoothing them out and weathering them. But I think I'm gonna carve that broken look into it. Using this little, uh, I don't know what it's called. It's like a little saw blade, but it's diamond shaped. But it's got a real aggressive cutting edge. And it's doing a real good job of putting grain texture in the wood. Should make this look pretty good. Lord knows I've been hung up enough on stumps and stick ups over the years. Seen plenty of them up close. Alright, I hope that shows up on camera. A little, little bit of texture I put in it. Alright, I need to work on the ends of these to make them look more jagged and broken. That one's pretty good. Like I could do a little bit more to it. Same with the end of this one. Yeah, it's okay, I guess.
I think that looks pretty much like it's broke off. You can almost see a little bit of grain in there. Just rolling this coarse bit on there and it's putting a little tiny just a little bit more texture on it just something different just adding to it all right well, that's gonna get it i like it what do y'all think Sun's getting bright on it, so I don't know how well it's going to be seen. I like the fuzziness of it. I like that I'm not going to have to sand it. <laughs> I just, I, you know, I didn't even think about it until, until I started doing it that fuzz from the grinding is perfect for an algae appearance an algae feel once it gets painted and i add a little bit of actual moss to it uh it'll look nice and weathered like it's been in the water for a long time so all right, so I'm going to stop there, and um, when I start part, uh, see, I think I'm on part nine, the eyes will be in uh, any day now, and I'll be able to start on um, mounting the eyes with the epoxy sculpt. And, uh, and then blending the fins into the body with epoxy sculpt. So I'm, I may do that in one part by itself. And, uh, and then again, I may go ahead and, and uh, put the, after that sets, put the gesso in there and add that on there. And then the final parts, hopefully I can do it in one part. It may take two parts to uh, do the final painting. Uh, just depends on how it goes and how detailed I get. I think I'm going to use uh, some pigment powder and uh, watercolor pencils to layer on lots of lots and lots and lots of layers of color, and uh, I'll airbrush base coats on. But to build up the color on it, I think I'm going to do uh, real thin washes. I've done it with acrylic in the past, but I'm think I'm going to do it with watercolor pencil. And, and just wet damp sponges to blend it in and I'll show you that uh, once I start doing it but I've been kind of studying some taxidermists uh, that do it that way and uh, I, I like the way it looks so I'm going to try that on this crappie and uh, we'll see how it goes so anyway I appreciate y'all watching and uh, as always if you'll please subscribe and hit that thumbs up I'd appreciate it and uh, any comments or suggestions you have, leave them for me in the comment section below. And I will see you on part nine.